What is happening everybody? My name is Glyscore101 and welcome back to First Impressions. Today we are watching the Cheetah Girls. Fuck me. Um <laughs> I was trying to decide what I wanted to watch next, and it was it was kinda getting harder to pick, honestly, because it's kinda like throwing a dart. At it, but instead of it hitting a dartboard, you're hitting yourself in the face. You know wherever it's gonna land, it's gonna be painful. But you have no real control over the dart because you're really bad at playing darts. So you might hit an eye or something by accident. So let's hope that watching the Cheetah Girls will not be hitting myself in the fucking eye with a dart. Let's jump in. Oh god, this is already awful. Their dance. Is that Raven? Is that so Raven? That's so Raven! <laughs> ah, she's fucking up. All the kids are laughing at you. Stop fucking it up. Why are you just doing flips and shit? Okay, so I'm on my phone googling at this point. Apparently this was popular. Like, I'm looking at this shit. Apparently they were an actual girl group for a while. Apparently there's a video game. Apparently there's a fucking sequel. Jesus. Oh no, there's, there's two sequels, guys. I'm gonna have to watch both of those, aren't I? I'm gonna say that's so Raven every time she's on scene. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't even fucking watch that so Ra Raven. I've just heard it quoted. I know we're supposed to be rooting for the protagonist right off the bat, but so far they've given me no reason to root for the protagonist, so I'm not. Movies... This is a problem I have with movies like this. They expect you want to want the protagonist to succeed just because the movie's about them. You need to actually make your protagonist a likable character so we get attached to them. It's like, what, five minutes in and this bitch is like, I want money. That's all her ambition is. And we haven't got a single selfless ambition or reason for why she needs this money, so fuck her. There's another cheetah girl, this one's doing some fucking work at least. I've also noticed with these things, the Disney Channel original movies, they all seem to clock in at exactly an hour and a half. Like nobody had a story they wanted to tell that was like, it needs all of these scenes so it's important. It's usually just, we need it to be an hour and a half so we can have 30 minutes of ads and it to clock in at 2 hours to fit the runtime for a Disney Channel movie. Why do they have the Cheetah Girls printed on their wall? Were you this into your fucking high school band you were in? It would be like if I got a Gliscor plaque put it on my wall. No, it's a fucking hobby, okay? You know, we call ourselves the Cheetahs because the Cheetah is the fastest and the fiercest feline in the jungle. Oh my god, you're so awful and I hate you. Oh my god, is she gonna be embarrassed about the fact she has a fucking job? Is that gonna be the fucking plot point? Because if so, I hate her friends for making her feel bad about that. There are so many subplots going on right now. Okay, that girl was fucking cleaning the floor with a mop, so I'm pretty sure she's gonna be embarrassed about being poor or some shit. Raven is being a bitch and trying to control the band. She's moving to Paris and her mom's a slut. <laughs> and the other girl's mom isn't paying attention to her. I think that's all the subplots, but what are they gonna do? It's not that long of a movie. There's gonna be one scene where they all air their grievances, and that's gonna be it, I bet. That's gonna be the resolution, and I'm gonna be pissed off. Ah, <sighs> she just stepped in dog shit. That's gonna be fun when it's a plot point. Ah, uh, she stepped in dog shit. Isn't that hilarious? I swear to God, this was the plot of Alvin and the Chipmunks too. I feel like... Like, I know Raven must be a halfway decent actor with all the shit she's in, I don't know really, 
But I feel like she's really what's bringing this down. The like Queen Bee bitch angle really can work. Like if it was like a Regina George Mean Girls thing. But she's just not playing it well enough where it seems like she'd be able to pull it off. You know, like she needs to be confident enough in herself that it kind of works. But because her acting just isn't strong enough, it doesn't come together. And that's really what the movie's riding on. It's not entertaining enough. Like her telling a like telling her one of her friends, this is what you should be wearing. What you're wearing is not good enough. It's not attractive enough. That should be brutal, and it's just not coming across. Oh, here's where she finds out. If they have a good heart-to-heart -heart here, I think I will put this movie ahead of Up, Up, and Away. My mom! My real mom! She didn't want me! And I'm a foster child, and I live here with ten other kids! Stay here! And I want to stay here with my friends and at school! And with the cheetah girls because it's the best I've ever had, Chanel! And please don't... Don't take it from me! Jesus, that was a legitimate emotional moment out of the fucking Cheetah Girls movie. I'm not super down with the whole I'm adopted so life sucks thing and how little she seems to be talking about her adopted family, but... Like, I figured her parents were dead. I knew she wasn't well off, but the fact that she's actually kinda super poor compared to her actual friends. That's interesting. That's... Okay, how, how long have we got left? We have 40 minutes left in this movie. If they manage to pull all of these subplots together, then just fuck, they're doing well. And she's gonna be happy for her and everyone else in the group's gonna be a bitch. Oh. I can't believe I'm gonna have to give a positive review to the fucking Cheetah Girls movie. I don't know if it's just because I expected so much worse when I started up this movie, or because there's actually quality to the writing here. Oh, I'm sorry. We, we don't lip sync. Don't worry. We'll teach you. <laughs> this is totally Alvin and the Chipmunks. This is interesting, because before I was like, how are they going to resolve this? Because she's very clearly in the wrong and a bitch. But now she's in the moral right, but she's done so much shit that they're all like, no, fuck you anyway. It's just, I'm so hesitant to call this a good movie, because, like... The threat of a generic, shitty ending is just looming, and I can see it happening. And they keep moving in interesting directions, but never ruling out the possibility of ending terribly. Is this gonna go with the true artist bullshit in the end? Fuck you. Some people just like making pop music. Like, yeah, being forced to make shitty pop music, yeah, that's bad. But if you actually enjoy the music you're making, and it just happens to have, like, a plot, a uh, pop kind of feel, then that's fine. They're allowed to do that. Don't act like you're the true artist, because you're making some indie garbage no one actually likes. Is this movie gonna shit the bed in the climax? I'm so curious. I'm kind of hoping it does at this point in some weird way. Because right now it's done, like, fairly good, and I'm hoping the ending is somehow a train wreck just because I'm malicious. Oh god, they're gonna fucking sing to him. That's gonna be the ending. They're gonna need to sing to the dog so he follows them. Oh, that's so stupid. The song's called Together We Can. Thank you. Thank you, Cheetah Girls, for supplying me with a shitty climax so I can justifiably hate your mediocre movie. Oh no, she whispered some shit. It's gonna be a messy, big, loud climax ending. 
Are they gonna sing we're all in this together for no reason at the end? Okay, I think this is the end. They're just kind of singing, which is fucking weird to do in the middle of the street. I have a few issues with this movie, especially the ending, because they didn't really resolve much. Bitchy girl's still gonna be a bitch. Adopted girl is still better off joining the dance crew rather than doing the shit with the cheetah girls. And the ending was just unsatisfying. They just sang, which is what I thought would happen, and that's garbage. However, this movie had a lot more interesting ideas than a few others I could name. But also, fuck that. Fuck, fuck whatever's happening on screen right now. Oh god. I don't know what's worse. I thought they were just not gonna talk about all the subplots and shit, and I was up disappointed, but this wrap-up conclusion is just disappointing. They didn't even fucking compete! Fuck you, they should've lost. The rappers should've won. I hate that, no. This movie made me angry in the last five minutes. There's actually nobody on the phone, there's just, there was a gas leak on the street and they're all just fucking delusional. I feel like the writer got drunk during the climax there, cause that was so much worse than everything else. Okay, okay, okay. Final thoughts. Better than I thought. It had some interesting subplot ideas, but I don't think there was a single subplot that got resolved in a good way. And that is a big problem. However, Up, Up and Away made me consistently angry towards, like, the latter half. And surprisingly enough, this movie didn't. I wasn't completely enraged or waiting for it to just fucking end. So, in that regards, and especially considering I am nowhere, nowhere near the demographic for a fucking Cheetah Girls movie, but they did enough interesting character stuff that I could at least appreciate that effort was put in. What you've got to remember is these are all graded on a curve. And as far as this one did, it actually stands up against some real movies I've seen. And in the Disney Disasters lineup, I guess that's an accomplishment. But anyways, check out the main review if you haven't. It'll have my thoughts in a more coherent, written fashion. And be sure to tune in next time for the next First Impressions. See you later, guys. <laughs>